I'm Scott. And hey, why can't I see anything? Where is everybody? So today we'll be doing about the aquarium sump. That's right, we built a custom sump, handmade, well not handmade, but homemade, for our reef tank, right? And also, just to remind you guys, thank you. Um, make sure to subscribe, um, also like this video, go to our website, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and that really helps us, and it helps our channel grow a lot. Totally, everything she just said, your subscriptions and your support mean everything to us. So if you know anybody else who might enjoy a family, uh, a querying and pet keeping channel, the share them. show them what we do. Make sure to subscribe. It's free to you and it absolutely means the world to us and helps support what we're doing. So rock on and thank you for the support and please keep it up. So as Zosha said, we made a custom sump for our reef tank. Now Zosha, what size aquarium did we use to make this sump? Uh, 20 long. Yep, that's right. We bought a 20 long at a dollar per gallon sale, so it cost Zero. Why was I saying that? Twenty dollars. It cost twenty bucks, right? Yeah. It was super Dollar cheap. Are the best. And another way to save money is where did we get the glass for the baffles inside the sump? We used up our old scratch tap, um, thirty-eight gallon. Yes. Yep, that's right. I had an old thirty-eight sitting around that used to be the planted aquarium, uh, which I actually found in a dumpster. Yes. Not that I frequent dumpsters, but I happen to see this one and save it, right? And we've been using it as a planted aquarium for a long, long time. Oh, Jenny's down here. Hello. And um, it's getting a little worse for wear. As you said, it was real scratched up, wasn't yes, it? Yes, very. So we cut the seams and we cut the frame off and I cleaned up all the glass and then cut the glass into pieces and um, we used it for the baffles. So take a look at this time-lapse video of us putting some of it together. What's up, Ginger? Hi. And um, at the end, we'll go over a detailed explanation of exactly how we have everything plumbed and working for the reef tank. And um, hope you guys enjoy. Enjoy. Inside our sump. All right, here's the sump, and this is what we've got going on. Now, I didn't bother tape the silicon areas or anything, so they're a little sloppy, but it works beautifully. So let me explain how we've got this broken down. So we actually have this broken up into four chambers. So there are only three pieces of glass that were siliconed into this, and I'll explain exactly how it works. This first chamber, is where the water comes down from the primary overflow in the aquarium. And I have that set up to be a full siphon, and we'll show you that in a second, but that basically helps keep it extra quiet. And that water level is consistent and it will contain the heaters, as you can see, and then eventually a protein skimmer. Oh, that's so cool. Zosha, let me ask you, do you know what a protein skimmer is? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, well, what a protein skimmer is is actually really cool. Have you ever been to the beach? I know you have, because you've yes. been hanging out with me, right? And notice that sometimes the waves make like a foam? Yeah, I do. Exactly, so what that is, is that when you put little tiny air bubbles through seawater that has organics in it, the organics stick to the bubbles, 
and foam up to the top. And a protein skimmer actually filters the water using that pr principle. Oh, well, that's cool. So, yep, so we'll get one of those, and that's where that's gonna go here in this first section. Now from here, it spills over and has to go through this media basket that I built with just some basic egg crate. And then this second baffle. And then actually, Ginny comes in and then Yep, and then the Ginny's water. here do, doing all sorts of stuff. No, but he's the second baffle is actually sitting about an inch off the bottom. That means the water has to come through the top, be forced through the media that we put over this basket, and then go underneath to the next chamber. And that is where we can put carbon and filter floss and other cool stuff, right? That's awesome. Now, this next section you see with the rock rubble in it, that is going to be our refugium. Ooh, Do you know what goes in a refugium there, Zosha? Doesn't want the minerals and like... Well, not really minerals so much, but a special algae. So what kind of algae is it? Yep, we're going to use a macroalgae called Chetomorpha, which is a real simple, um, extremely hardy uh, algae that grows extremely well. We're going to put a bright light over there once we get the Cheto. And what that does is that soaks up all of the, well, uses up the nitrates and phosphates that are produced through the fish food and the nitrification process. And it's a form of nutrient export and it helps keep the water extra clean. That's great. Which is super cool, right? And you can also grow isopods, which are like little tiny invertebrates, little microfauna that Wait, live so in there. So there's gonna be water isopods? Yeah. What? Absolutely. Yep, yep. Aquatic isopods and things Aquatic like that. Aquatic isopods. Never heard of that. And uh, all sorts of little microfauna that live in there that will grow. It is a healthy thing to have in the aquarium. And some of those will end up going up into the, in the uh, display tank and can be a food source for the corals and some of the smaller fish. Well, that's great for the corals. Totally rad, right? And then from there, it actually goes over one other baffle and then goes into this last section. And that is just the simple return pump section. Now, the reason why this one is isolated is that sections two and sections one over here will have a constant water level no matter what. This last section is the only part that will go down with evaporation. And you can see I have a line here. So in time, we're gonna build an automatic top off unit that puts fresh water in to make up for evaporated water. Um, but that, for now, is just being uh, topped off by hand, and there we go. Now, to continue on the plumbing, we've got our return pump plumbed up to a Y, if you will. It goes into two places. One of them, right here, runs up and into the tank, which I'll show you in a second. And the other is actually just being routed back across, back to the beginning of the sump. And the reason for that, Zosha, do you have any guesses as to why I have that split into two outlets? Hmm, I don't know. Which is it? Yeah, no, that's okay. There are two reasons. One is this pump is stronger than we need, and it would put too much water in the aquarium. Oh, yes, I remember testing it, and it like sprayed all yeah, over me. Yeah, this is a monster pump. I think it does like 1,200 gallons an hour at five feet or something. It's, it's a really, really strong pump. So we don't need all that power, and frankly, that would overwhelm our overflow. But the other major reason for that is that it enables us to have an extra source of water here going through the filter that we can reroute into a calcium reactor, a carbon reactor, a GFO reactor, or some of the other things that are popular for reef tanks. And that's all stuff that I'm gonna teach you all about. Sound good? And then, of course, the other half goes up. So now let's cut here, and then I will show you what's going on in our overflow. Okay, so if you saw our earlier videos, you saw where we drilled the aquarium, and we put the two holes in the back of the aquarium, and then we silicone in this um, overflow box, which is really just called a weir, and that's what we have working. Now, to keep this super quiet, we're doing what they call a Hervey overflow. So the drain on the left-hand side, you see, the one that's pointed down into the box, is at full siphon. You notice there's no air going in with the water. And we have that adjusted just so there's enough flow that that stays at a full siphon and just a tiny little amount goes into the second one over here to the side. And that is the emergency drain. So if for some reason this first one got clogged or the pump started pumping out more water, the second one could take over and take some of the oh, uh, extra so extra like, oomph, if you will. So like it's like a two part. So if one breaks, then that one running for safety. We have a backup to make sure we don't have any spills. Now let me move around to the back here and I'll show you what we did in terms of the plumbing. And it's a real simple plumbing job. I'm going to do my best to get the foam back here. Okay, there we go. 
So you've got your two drains that run down to the sump, and then of course the return that runs up between them, and I just use simple PVC fittings to create these two returns. Now each of these returns have half inch threaded fittings on the end, which I plan to put a very cool thing called a random flow generator on there, which helps make the flow move around in odd directions, right? It's all blip, 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 blip. But this is a, if you hear everybody be real quiet for a second, listen. Not much sound. You don't hear any splashing, you don't hear any splooshing or, or gurgling or anything like that. And it works beautifully. Now this is one of the most important pieces though. We keep this little piece of glass over the overflow and that will keep the snails and stuff that we are eventually gonna have in there from crawling in there and then going down one of the tubes and blocking it. Oh, I remember in a freshwater, like a shrimp got up into the system. Like, yeah, exactly. They and that? they totally will. Now little guys could still get past the weir, but shrimp that will, or excuse me, sail, snails that are likely to block an overflow would have a hard time pulling that off. And as you can hear and see, the system works beautifully. Now to go back down underneath, you see we have our two drains. So we have our primary drain, which has a valve on it, which is the full siphon. And if you look underwater here, you notice that there's really no bubbles coming out of that outflow. That's cranking about three, 400 gallons per hour, but you can't see it. And then the emergency overflow is over here. And it would have bubbles if it had much going down it, but we have it adjusted so there's just a trickle. And it's just so cool how it just barely goes over and it's just yep. like... Yep, stays nice and quiet, no splashing, no sp salt spraying anywhere, and it's working beautifully. Yay! I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you learned something. Yeah, that was a fun project, wasn't it? And also just to remind you guys again, please subscribe. It really helps us like this video, share it with friends, Follow our Instagram and Facebook. We'll be posting all the time and also have a website. It is so useful. It's just so wonderful to us to have everybody subscribe and support us. It keeps us energized, doesn't it? Yes. And we love your support and we thank everybody for everybody who's been with us so far on this journey. And again, stick with us. Tell us somebody else about our channel and we're gonna keep building some cool stuff and we can't wait for the reef to fill in. I know, we're so excited. We got plants okay. coming for the planted tank, right? And if you follow our inside, you might see some sneak peeks of some new stuff. Super. So we'll see you next time, okay? Thank you for watching. Au revoir. Adios. Bye bye. Pa. Konnichiwa. I don't know, does konnichiwa mean bye? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, bye. Bye.